Hey, Exoticals! I'm starting a new series on this channel called The Rant Booth, where we can come on here and just vent and rant about our issues and things that we're going through for the day. Whatever's on my heart, I'll come on here and just rant and vent. And y'all can feel free to do the same in the comments. It's good to relieve stress. And I feel like the phone booth is the perfect ideal place to vent and rant. Because nobody can hear you. It's soundproof. But you can just let it all out. So we're going to call this series The Rant Booth. Hey Pretty Girl Club. This video, I want to dedicate this video to all the women out there who have narcissistic mothers and who get triggered around Mother's Day. So as for me, y'all know, I grew up with a narcissistic mother. She, I believe, was very jealous of me. And I talk about her in my narcissistic mother's video. Check that video out. But around this time of year, I get very triggered because I have such... Me and my mom had such a negative relationship growing up. We always argued. It got so bad to the point where I remember one time saying I hate her before. Because it was just like... she I've never felt like she had my back, ever. I always felt like there was a low-key jealousy there because of the things that she would say. I'm lighter complected than her. And she... Based off of the things that she's told me, I believe she has a hatred towards lighter-skinned women. She talks badly about a lot of light-skinned women. So for example, okay, like, my father has a daughter from another woman before they were married. And that lady that he was with was light-skinned. Like, she was as light as, like, ice spice, right? And then... I guess my dad had a thing with light-skinned girls. So my mom told me one day in a rant that my dad always dated light-skinned girls and stuff like that. Always cheated on her with light-skinned girls. You're telling your daughter that, first of all, you're telling your daughter that her your, her father cheated on your mom, which is, I feel like it's a boundary that you shouldn't cross. But she, yeah, she told me that. And then she was telling me also that my aunt, which is my father's sister, she's high yellow too. And she told me that she is the reason why she has alopecia. Because she said before I was born, when they were teenagers, I guess, my aunt put a white girl perm in her hair and it fell out and it just never grew back. So her phenotype is, if you can picture Oprah, that's the best I can explain her phenotype is like Oprah to give you guys an idea of how she looks and I look completely different I have a completely different phenotype I actually have the same phenotype as the girls that my father cheated on her with so I always felt this thing between us because I mind you I have another little sister and she doesn't treat her the same way she treats me she used to be so heavy on me even down to like like even when it comes to clothes that we would wear like going to church like I was the most policed before going to church I'm gonna make a whole video on being pretty at church so but I don't want to I digress but so it's just like that was an example I also told you guys the example of how she never she never had my back when I was being bullied I never, I, ha I never had that relationship with my mom where I could just talk up to her about my problems. Like, this space, this YouTube channel is, like, I'm, okay, I'm in my 30s. I just entered the 30s, and I had never had this much validation in my life from people since I started YouTube. And people who can relate to me and feel what I'm saying. Because... I didn't have anybody to vent or talk about these type of things to, not even my mom. I couldn't talk about my mom about these pretty problem issues. Because even my mom told me when she was young, she was pretty, she was the pretty girl in school and she had got, she had issues, but it's like, there's a resentment from me. I don't know what it is. Because she used to be pretty when she was younger too. 
but it's like she treats me just so like I'm her like she's forced to I don't know y'all know what I'm saying like she's forced to deal with me it almost feels like I'm an enemy and I'm her daughter but she has to be nice to me because I'm her daughter but I can tell the I can read the fake right through the the fake smile like I can just tell when somebody's being fake with me even my own mom like that intuition is real Because it would be like any little thing that I would say, she would say, I'm having an attitude. Why am I talking to her with an attitude? And I'll be talking to her just like, just like how I'm talking to you guys right now. But she'll be like, why do I have an attitude? It's like I trigger her to the point where she feels like anything I say is offensive. So around Mother's Day, when Mother's Day is coming around, no, I'm not excited to celebrate. I almost almost have to give a present because I have to, but I, I don't have any feelings about it because she's never treated me good. She's done things for me because I'm her daughter. She's supposed to take care of her daughter, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, there's those type of mothers who, you know, are there for their daughters, and then there's the ones that just raise their daughters, and... I just felt like I was just raised. A lot of stuff I dealt with on my own. A lot of social issues. A lot of bullying. All this confusing stuff about colorism growing up. I had to learn all of these things through the outside world. Because my mom was a true narcissist. Like, we always get into it to the point where I can't talk to her. And then because... And she, she's not... She has this energy with a lot of people, y'all. Like, my mother is the reason okay so quick story time my father is a pastor and he owned a church for a couple of years we had that church for at least 10 years i think so and this church came to an end and we were doing really good we started off you know we started off having churches in like hotel lobbies at first and so we were able to afford a building and then when my father finally got a building you know our church grew and we got more and more people but then slowly and slowly people started to leave the church and i'm in my head and it's a lot of the women too and i'm just in my head like what's going on what's going on and i'm just putting it together as i'm witnessing things and hearing other people talk and it's my mom people are leaving the church because of my mom my mom makes other women feel in some type of way i guess when they're around my dad my mom is so insecure when other women are around my father she gets some type of way and it got so bad that our church came to a complete end and i had to figure all of this out as an adult my father lied to me about why our church ended he said he um god told him to do something else but I ended up learning the truth you know through growing up being an adult and learning things for what they really are because you know when you're a kid you don't see things for what they are until you become an adult and understand what's going on and so that what was going on my mom ran out all the women in the church to the point where we had no more church and I honestly feel like truly in the deep of my soul that my mom felt some type of way with my father being around me. That might sound crazy, but it, it, I'm, I'm trying to tell y'all, she always used to make me cover up around my father. Not, and I'm not even exposed, mind you, like as far as my cleavage, but even like... You know how you have, like, the slightest cleavage barely showing? She'll be like, I'm doing too much when I'm around my dad. I need to cover up. And I understand I have to cover up about my dad. But the way she goes about it with me is, like, I'm doing too much. And I would be completely in, like, sweatpants and, like, a tank top. And she'll tell me to put a shirt on before I talk to my dad on FaceTime or something like that. So she's very insecure when I'm around. She gets very triggered when I'm around. Everybody sees it, but nobody says anything in my household. They see that I am the target of her. But nobody in the household never said anything. 
So I did feel alone growing up. I had nobody to talk to for real. My dad was always gone because if he wasn't at church, he was he was working because he was in the Marines. So he was always deployed or gone. And my mom was a narcissist. And so I had to deal with that when my dad was gone. And I had no friends at school because of all the issues that come with being pretty and light skinned. And I've already talked about those issues. And y'all already know how that is. Like being pretty and light skinned growing up, it was just hard. Like I felt alone a lot growing up. So I, having this channel makes me feel like I finally have a group of people who understand where I'm coming from. I feel like I have a family, of, a community of girls who get me. Even at work, I be trying to make friends at work. I know that's a thing. People have a thing with, you're not supposed to make friends at work. Work is just supposed to be work. But it's like, I always wonder, like, how are adults supposed to make friends? Like, we used to make friends in school because we was in school. I made friends when I was in college. And then, but after school, how do you make your friends? All you do is work after you become an adult. I mean, you're not making friends at the bar unless you are. I always wondered that. Like, how else are people making friends when people say that? But, yeah, I always had an issue with making friends at work because the females would hate. And then, because I, I worked in a lot of male-dominated jobs, and males are attracted to me. I am like honey on a stick to bees or something, with flies just swarming around me. Every time I go into a new place, a new job, a new school. Yeah, I know I'm a military brat, so I went to a bunch of schools, and I was always a new girl somewhere. I was always a new girl. And I've had this experience everywhere that I've been to, the new pretty girl. <laughs> so, but anyway, I digress. So yeah, um, Mother's Day for me isn't so pleasant. I almost feel like I'm forced to say Happy Mother's Day or she's going to feel some type of way and make me feel bad about it. Like she always does. Like she has a way of making me feel bad about stuff. When things don't go her way, it's like all ways about her. And I'm just, I'm, I'm mentally tired of being around her, having to talk to her because she's my mom and she doesn't do nothing but make me feel bad because she gets triggered by me. Imagine somebody being triggered by their own daughter. Like, how am I supposed to talk to my mom if she's always triggered by me? Like, I... <laughs> You understand? I don't know if any of y'all know where I'm coming from, but to all the girls, to not girls, excuse me, to all the women out there who deal with narcissistic mothers, how do you feel around Mother's Day? Does it make you feel some type of way? Do you feel like you have to, you're forced to say Happy Mother's Day? Does it not feel genuine when this time comes around? Let me know what you guys go through in the comment section. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for listening.